Good evening. This is a meeting of the Northampton Public Works Commission. It's uh, Wednesday, January 13th, 5.30 in the evening. Uh, first item on our agenda is public comment. Seeing no one is here from the public, we'll jump over that. Next item on the agenda is uh, approval of the minutes of the December 2nd, 2015 Public Works Commission meeting. Move approval. Second. There were a few amendments. Okay. Are you comfortable voting on this at this point? Were they substantial in nature? No. Okay. All those in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Passes? Uh, we have no new business or old business on the agenda, uh, so we'll move on to informational. And the first item is contract update. Soon, you're doing that, Jim? Yep. Nobody has a list. Nobody has a list. Yes, she sent us everything, I believe. Oh, I, I you probably also, sent it to us. Oh, yeah. I believe so, yeah. but. Do you want I didn't get it either. I got a capture. I, did, I neglected oh, to take it off my printer. You can start. The first item on the uh, contract update list was change order number one on the, inter on the uh, industrial park interceptor sewer project. Was, uh, <coughs> a change order in the amount of $6,629 to Borges Construction. Um, that was essentially a balancing change order at the end of the project and, and um, the increase was related to um, some additional paving that we did on the project. When we when we reached the end, we realized that we wanted to make some changes to what uh, our pavement approach was there to make things a little better for the neighborhood. So that's what that contract was. Um, the next contract is an annual propane gas contract in the value of $32,355. Um, that's a <coughs> water enterprise fund um, contract. The next contract is a, an annual contract for a purchase of hydrants in the value of $19,752 with Auburn um, Wind Water Works. That's a water enterprise fund expansion. <coughs> the, uh, the next contract is gas uh, for gas monitoring change order number one in the value of $2,700 with Stantec Consulting. It's a landfill enterprise fund um, project. We had asked Stantec to um, develop a new landfill gas generation model for us. We never, um, we had developed a landfill gas generation model a few years ago when we were looking at expanding the landfill into phase five and we never had uh, a model completed for the landfill in the state in which it was closed. So we were looking to have a um, this model updated to reflect just the waste that went into the landfill until it closed so that we have accurate um, generation model because we're still working with Amresco on the gas to energy facility and we're seeing different rates of generation and we want to have some idea when we're starting to drop off that peak and how quickly. Mm -hmm. So we hired Stantec to develop that model for us. Um, the next contract was uh, change order number one on the Water Street sewer replacement project. Um, that's with Ludlow Construction. That was work related to um, connecting a service lateral um, to one of the houses on Warner Street, which would in, which involved um, replacing um, about 42 linear feet of eight-inch pipe. So that was um, that change order. Um, the next contract was for a detachable snowblower with CN Wood um, in the value of 123,552. Wow. This is a very large snowblower, probably not the one you're going <laughs> to. Probably not the one you're going to do. Uh, Is it rentable for your driveway uh, with residential occupancy? <laughs> yeah. Apparently, this is a new piece of equipment replacing a circa 1971 blower that we used. Um, we mount it on a loader and we use it um, for clearing snow downtown and in different areas. So um, Richie was telling me <coughs> 250 tons per minute it, it can move and will fill up. We'll fill a truck in about 15 seconds. So apparently, it's big enough. It's big enough. It's, it's over there. It's, the, 
It's up there, behind him. Oh, right behind, behind you. you. Right. Precise, appropriately. Um, the next contract was for Bliss Street Water Main Replacement um, with Gilher Enterprises, $185,045 water enterprise fund expenditure. Um, it's replacing a very bad section of Water Main and Bliss Street. We've had four, I think I may have mentioned this yeah. in a previous meeting, four breaks in about two years out there. Um, we signed the contract with Gilher and they're actually out there now. They've got, um, They've made good headway, they're not done yet, but the things are kind of moving along um, on that project. Um, next contract is for um, Plasky Park Utility um, Relocation Project, and this was for Contract Corporation for Fiber Rerouting in, in the amount of $21,450. Um, it's a Plasky Park expenditure paid for by CPA grant money. Um, the next contract is Plasky Park Phase 1, um, change order number 2 with Mountain View Landscapes. It's a credit in the amount of $4,649. We made a couple of changes um, at the recommendation of Stimson Associates, um, which involved um, the specification for benches that we were going to have. We put in a less expensive type of bench, and then we used some of the money that we recouped from the benches um, to extend um, the irrigation system. So as an irrigation system was proposed and um, Stimson thought it would be a good idea to extend irrigation into planter islands and boxes. So they made that change and we had a little bit of money left over from that. Um, the next contract is uh, backup waste hauling change order number three alternative recycling in the amount of $8,000. Um, ARS does the backup hauling for us. If we have a problem with our truck out here at the transfer station, we call them and they come and do the hauling that we need to do and, until we're back up and running. So this is the annual? It's, yeah, it's... Um, well, so it's a change order. Why is it yeah, a change order? Change order number three. Because we had a contract um, and we what we did was rather than um, do a whole new contract, we extended it for six months until we can do up a new one okay. for, so it's it's like an extension, so uh, it, it's a time extension and it had to have a little more money so we could rebid in June. Okay. Um, the next um, contract is phase four land foreclosure change order number four. In the amount of five thousand ninety-one dollars with Jay Bates and Sons. Um, we had some gas system repair work that needed to be done out there. There was um, a couple of problems that we had. Some um, damage to one well that occurred during mowing of the landfill cap this year. So we had made some temporary repairs with our staff, but we needed to get Jay Bates out there to do a more permanent repair, which they have accomplished. Um, the next contract was change order number one for traffic control devices with um, Dago Electric in the amount of $3,000. Um, this was work related to adding an additional one-way green arrow signal head um, at the intersection of Main and Pleasant Street. And the change order also had an ex a time extension for them to complete the work. And the last contract listed here is a Clement Street Bridge Engineering Services with um, Green and Pedersen, change order number one in the value of $7,500. Um, Ned had been working with, with Green and Pedersen on a, an evaluation and recommendations for um, repair and improvements to the Clement Street Bridge. They had um, submitted a draft report to him and he had um, several comments that he sent back and um, some comments I guess were beyond the scope of the original study in terms of alternatives. So this this um, change order will allow them to add an alternative and to make some additional changes to the report that they have asked for. Is this, um, excuse me, is this going to be a, a whole design for the work? Is that what, when you say report, is that what it is, an actual design or just a feasibility so study or a structural study? Or it's, a fe it's a feasibility study involved a structural review of the bridge. So they looked at MassDOT um, inspections of the bridge, they did their own inspection of the bridge, and they evaluated a number of different repair alternatives. Mm -hmm. um, 
so it, it sort of identifies where, you know, depending on how much money you put in, the, the life of the bridge will right. vary, and whether it's local money or trying to get it back onto in, into MassDOT, there's a scheduling issue there because it's not really on MassDOT's radar. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a whole kind of strategy in looking at alternatives and what the cost would be. Do you know what the original contract value is? I'll say it was about 35. Um, I would say within a month. <coughs> Any more questions on the contracts? Uh, before we move on, um, excuse me. Are you here for any particular purpose? Um, yeah, I'm from the Gazette. I'm, oh. I'm here to hear the uh, director search up. Yes. I have a question regarding the snowblower. It's the other half of the snowblower, the, <coughs> the trucks that receive the snow. Yeah. And I wonder if, because of the capacity of the blower, if, if these large semi trailer trucks could be higher that would take it away as fast as it's being blown. Um, it's a good question. I don't, I don't know the answer to it. I can talk to Richie about it. We have talked <coughs> about that in the past. Um, our snow dump is, is right is not too far away, so I don't know mm -hmm. how much downtime there is because they're going they're working downtown. They're going from downtown to the old Honda right. site. But um, I can ask Rich if he's thought about that or if it, it would make sense at all to uh, to try to look at renting any trucks that have more capacity. Right. Very good. Um, Next item on the agenda is an update regarding tree cutting in the uh, watersheds. I spoke with Nicole um, to get an update on where we, on where we are, and um, basically pre prepared to talk about the um, the various contracts that we have for the red pine work. So we had um, kind of in a big rush to um, get this red pine project moving because of the uh, red pine scale. Um, we're, we're about halfway done, I would say. We've got, Nicole was indicating that we're, um, we've removed red pine on about 52 acres of <coughs> 121 acres that we, in, we intend on going in and removing the pines there that, that have either died or are in the process of dying. Um, there's a number of contracts that we have in order to do this work. Um, Cotton Tree Service um, is doing work up in the watershed um, near, the, near the Mountain Street Reservoir. Um, they're about 50% done with the work we've asked them to do, and they're going to be resuming work um, in the next couple of weeks up in the Mountain Street watershed area. Um, Cotton is also doing work down here in Northampton in the Roberts Meadow Reservoir watershed. They're about 10% done. Um, they're doing work along Reservoir Road and Chesterfield Road, and that work will be starting up, uh, restarting for them in February, March time frame. So it's going to look, if it's only 10% done, it's going to look substantially different when they get it'll done. Look, yeah, it'll look quite a bit different. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> um, we me. have um, co we have <coughs> other contracts in the Mountain Street Reservoir watershed with Evergreen Logging, and that work hasn't started yet, but it's <coughs> expected to begin this winter. Um, and so <coughs> we have two contracts with Sweeney Logging in the Ryan and West Waitley Reservoirs um, for red pine harvest, and they completed their work in the fall of, of, in the fall that just passed. So um, quite a bit of work that still needs to be done, but all the contracts are in place for it to move forward. And that's a wash, correct? Um, They're keeping the, <coughs> the wood, and we pay nothing, is what I was told when I went to the site visit for this. It depends. It depends on the contract. Some of them um, were getting paid, and some of the contracts were paying to have the work done. So it depended a little bit on the uh -huh. on how the contract was defined okay. and what the condition of the wood was. Okay. Do you need to know more than that? Um, not unless there's a substantial amount. Of, it was just I recall the the public information about this was that it wasn't going to cost the city because of the wood would be, you know, used by the company. I think overall, I don't, I think overall it didn't, um, I don't think it's going to cost anything. Okay. 
but there were some okay there were some contracts where we got ten thousand fifteen thousand dollars back there was a couple of contracts where we had to pay something okay but yeah overall it was um, i think it's in the on the plus side okay thanks any other questions on tree cutting next item is um says project update i'm not quite sure project we're talking about we weren't <laughs> sure either <laughs> placeholder <laughs> well we have 10 minutes what do you <laughs> i didn't prepare much of an update but i guess i wanted to but what i can let you know is that we do have um the Pulaski Park construction is ongoing, so even with the uh, the weather's been pretty conducive. Not not great today because it's windy and cold, but the weather's been pretty conducive for Mountain View to continue work out there. So they've been kind of grinding away, getting a lot done, and we're thankful for the progress that they've been making. Mm -hmm. And um, the project in Bliss Street with Gilleher on the water main replacement also um, started uh, right before Christmas, and they're making progress in helping us out with that problem. So those are. Um, I guess two of the construction projects that I just wanted to mention that are still ongoing through the money here. I got eight minutes left. I don't have a lot. <laughs> maybe, maybe we have enough questions to fill up. Maybe. <laughs> Any questions on those two projects? Uh, when when is Pulaski Park going to be finished? You know, they were at the beginning of the job. They said that they would be done in the spring, right. and they're they're planning at this point to work through the winter. Um, so May time frame I think because it's still in the spring is when all the planting will be done and they can only push that so early right and they have to sort there's a lot of plants that they need to source and I think they placed orders with growers for the plants so they're not sort of buying things off the shelf they placed an order for things to be grown mm -hmm. um, so I think probably May would be a uh, an estimated time frame so to be done. I guess the answer is they're on schedule or maybe sooner. Yeah, I think they're probably a little ahead, a little ahead of the schedule. We, we That's thought. great. Yeah. Really it's been good. a mild construction. Yeah. I noticed there was a photo in the paper about dirt being brought in, so I thought yeah. that meant that they were way ahead of schedule. Yeah, I think it's still, it, at the end, it's still the plantings that will hold them right. up. No, so I understand, right. yeah. But, but they are definitely making a lot of progress. Yeah. And um, you know it's good. We'd like for that to be wrapped up. Yeah. Um, we're trying to put all the money together for the oval construction, which will be next year. So it would be nice to have one contract done, mm -hmm. and then um, have the other one in place. Mm -hmm. Will they take the fencing down? When they're done. Okay. Yeah, we will. One of the things that we're looking at to. Um, if we can find the money, we're looking at rather than seeding the large green area using sod, because we were thinking that um, it would allow us to open up the park sooner. Mm -hmm. If we just seed it, then we have to sort of protect mm -hmm. certain areas of the park until things are fully established. So we're getting an estimate on that right now to see if there's enough money to do it. Okay, I think we can move on to the next item, which is the cemetery update. Doing a lot of cemetery work lately. Um, I guess the first thing I'll start off with is on the Bridge Street Cemetery Preservation Plan project is moving moving ahead um, pretty nicely, and we're working on getting a flyer out for um, the next public um, meeting, which will be February 11th at the Senior Center from 7 to 8:30, and we'll have um, the results of our preliminary sort of preliminary conclusions that Martha Lyon has put together based on the committee work and the public input that we get from the first meeting. So that project um, is moving along nicely. And I've been getting a lot of calls about the West Farm Cemetery um, and also the Park Street Cemetery in Florence. People are passionate about the cemeteries, which is great. Um, so I had been, I was contacted, um, actually different people have contacted me about these. And I contacted Martha Lyon to get a proposal from her to do a similar preservation plan for Park Street and West Farms Road, similar to what we did for Bridge Street. Um, Martha is, uh, she's been wonderful in the Bridge Street project and um, quite knowledgeable about cemetery preservation plans. So she provided a proposal to me and um, at this point, we believe there's enough money in the Perpetual Care Fund 
for the city cemeteries in order to fund on um, this preservation plan for, for those two cemeteries. So we don't need to. I'm sorry. Go for CPA funds. Right. We don't need to go for CPA funds for this. Great. Um, which would be good. Um, so we're because people have reached out to me, I can tell that this people really want to have input into these plans, um, similar to Bridge Street. So there's a component for a couple of public meetings and plenty of opportunity for people to uh, to help. I think it's like we've been saying at Bridge Street Cemetery. There so many people that are passionate about these things. The projects are they're really best when everyone has a chance to come in and share what they know. So I think these um, other two cemeteries will be the same. Um, I was contacted by the VFW in Florence, and they've offered to hold meetings and you know in their building and set up their own committee and you know do anything they can do to help. So it's really nice that people are trying to help um, improve the cemetery. So I'm happy about that. Question. Um, do you have, I see you have the proposal. Um, what is the timing for the plan, Just since we've got the money in? Um, um, the timing for the plan, it, the project can't start in the next fiscal year because the money for the con for this contract is not in the budget so. this fiscal year. So right. we we'll get it in the, con in the uh, budget for next year okay. and then sign the contract. So the work probably will start in July. And how long would, I don't see how long it would actually take to do this. I would say about six months. Okay. And you, since you've gotten the calls, and I've been involved with this a little bit, yep. you know there have a lot, number of people have been doing research and historical mapping in that already, so hopefully that can um, speed things up a little or reduce the amount of work that, yeah, great. is Martha aware of that? Has that information been shared with you? She at no, I don't think so. Okay, do you know who it is that I'm talking about who's done all this I work? I don't know. Okay, I'll talk to you later about that. That'd be awesome. Okay. And um, Martha tries to, she tries to reach out to get everything, that sort of, you know, what exists for information before she starts okay. to try to make her job a little bit easier. Yeah, there's a I woman who's been doing tons of work. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, sure. That's good. That's all I have in the okay. cemeteries. Good. Next item is um, DPW director search, and I can report a little on that, not not much. That uh, uh, we all know that the job's been posted. Uh, it's being handled by City Hall, Mayor's office primarily, and uh, Human Resources. Um, the opening or the applications are uh, uh, the application period ends February first. And at that point, uh, the mayor intends on assembling a screening committee um, to review the applications and report to him. Um, I believe they've told me, his office has told me he's still working on identifying the members of the screening committee. Um, he did ask me and I agreed to do it. So that's, we know one member, but that's about that's it. it. Uh -huh. that's, a, that's all I know right now, yes. Um, so that's really the gist of it. Nothing much will happen until February and then I think things will probably start rolling. Hopefully we'll have a number of great applications and we can go from there. I'd just like to say I hope one thing I ha having been in a position of hiring people in public government in local government. Um, I think it's useful if, if there's a process that allows for the employees to be engaged in some way. Um, there's all kinds of ways of doing it, you know, not necessarily putting them on you the mean committee. DPW employees? Yeah, okay. yeah, particularly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I remember the last time around there was a big public event at the Garden House. It wasn't quite what I'm thinking. Something mm -hmm. doesn't have to be that big, but just I'd like to see that happen. Mm -hmm. uh, I assume the employees wouldn't, wouldn't mind either. Sure. Anyway, thank you for stepping up to do that. David? <coughs> One of the second or third lines in this description is weekly hours, 40. And I think that's misleading. It should not be implied even that, that it's a 40-hour job. Uh, and obviously it's stretched over evenings and committee meetings. And but it clearly says exempt, right? Yeah, it's exempt. It's exempt. Yeah. Excuse me? If it says exempt position, then that's just, I mean, they say 40 because that's but it's salaried, so it doesn't matter. You, work, you get you paid work until the work gets done. <laughs> I still think it's mis misleading. Oh. 
And everyone who works in that field knows that. <laughs> well, then why say it? <laughs> That's a trick question in the interview process. <laughs> How many oh, hours did you be working? <laughs> so long. <laughs> has a base of 40. Right. Yeah. That's dog hours. <laughs> 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 Anything else? I don't, do. I, I don't. I didn't really go back and look for the word accomplishments, but but there's kind of a boilerplate focus on time and grade or experience. You know, five years of this or three years of that, and so on. But I, I think the accomplishments are more important than the time spent, spent and paid for. Yeah, that, that's a very valid point. I would hope that would come out in an in interview process. Well, it, it depends on the interviewee. Right, the right. right. Mm -hmm. There's a chance it will now. <laughs> <laughs> um, now that you brought it up. It's two separate items. We ready to move on from yeah. that? Okay. Oh, sure. yeah. um, one is the matrix study. Anybody have any idea? I, c I do inquire of City Hall, but I thought maybe there'd be more information out here. Okay. What it's did City Hall say? You did inquire? Yes, it's almost ready. Right. That was a while ago, so I don't know. It would seem to me if that there. Yeah. I'm sorry? I, did you get my email that there was no update? Because I, I responded to that. Yeah, yeah, maybe I've gotten a few of those. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know what the study is about. I'm assuming it's a management study, and it's something that would inform the process of the hiring of a new superintendent um, or director, whatever. Um, so that's why I'm inquiring, because I think that they're related, but I could be wrong. And if I were uh, applying for the position, I'd want to see that study kind of research I would right. do, so it, that's why I'm asking. It does seem to me that the timing is right. If the study uh, makes recommendations on changes and the city agrees to them, that this is the, an opportune time to do it with a new director. Um, but I don't know what the mayor's plans are for linking the two together. Do you know if there's a timeline in terms of the anticipated date of no, I don't know that. The, the, at the outset, when we, you know, maybe three months ago, four months ago, I, I don't remember exactly discussed it. It, it, was, it was going to move at a very rapid pace. So, like it would have been completed a month and a half ago. Or You're talking about the study. The study, okay. yeah. You're sure. talking about the hiring. Was talking about the she was talking about yeah. hiring for the position. Thanks for catching We just found out oh. about the need to hire somebody. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. No, no, I was the talking study. about Matrix yeah. Yeah. in, in no. itself. No, no, right. Yeah, I don't have any insight into the status of that study. Well, if you're watching, Mayor, I'd like to know. <laughs> um, I also would sure. just like to say, I, as you know, I was appointed to fill um, Terry's term, and it's up in March. So I intend to leave <laughs> when that is done. Oh, you're not going to ask to continue? Uh, probably not. Okay. Um, we'll see where I am with other work. And I do a lot for free, and I need to uh, do more <laughs> to pay my bills. <laughs> so. um, anything else on the director search? Questions? Got what we know now. You answered a lot of my questions. <laughs> uh, so now, shall we go around the table and see if there's anything else that we want to bring up? Gary? Yeah, I. I saw the um, uh, on NCTV, I think, of the Conservation Commission hearing where you were present. We were talking about the Upper Robert Meadow Dam removal, and I didn't really know when that, I didn't catch the beginning, so I don't know what date that happened. Was that the December meeting? Yeah. And I also didn't, I wasn't sure when it might happen, presumably this summer? Um, it's possible. Do we have, did you, does the city have the natural heritage uh, approval? Uh, typically you want that before you do your house plan. Um, we, we got the order conditions from the Conservation Commission at night. Um, yeah. We don't have any natural heritage issues on, oh, okay. on the project. So they already sort of said 
Yeah. Sounds good to us. They signed off. We had to go through MOOPA on that. Mm -hmm. They signed off on, on it. Um, there's two two issues. One got resolved this week. The friends the friends of the Upper Roberts Meadow Dam filed an appeal of a water quality certificate, which is a state permit that we received for the project. Um, the schedule for that appeal it wasn't it was supposed to run through I think June for the appeal to be resolved, and um, they withdrew the appeal this week just a couple of days ago. So that opens up the schedule in terms of being able to get out to bid once we receive the last permit we need is an Army Corps of Engineers permit. So if we get that permit this winter, it's conceivable that we could be out to bid, um, you know, in the early spring. Mm -hmm. The only other wild card is that we're still um, trying to secure a FEMA grant um, that would, it was, an, it was about a million dollar grant that would pay for the majority of the project, 75%. Mm -hmm. And um, that we've run into a few hurdles for them. And if that, if that moves ahead in a way that looks like we're going to get the grant, we actually wouldn't get the grant until later, like late summer, early yeah. fall at the earliest, in yeah. which case we would delay bidding um, until next winter and then do the project in 2017. Right. So it depends a little bit on what we get for feedback on the grant. If it doesn't look like we have a chance of getting it, we do actually have the money in the budget to, uh, to do the project this year. So. Great. Thank you. Um, fun looking at those videotapes and those meetings? Um, I, I, and I, well, I, yeah, I do, actually. <laughs> <laughs> that one was very good, because I, I was curious. I, I had seen and heard stuff over the years, and it seems like it's been in planning for, well, since 2007. Yeah. And so I, I happened to go by there. I did a, a hike on uh, Roberts Hill, which I'd never done, and I was out there, and I had my camera, and I just thought, you know, I should go take pictures of the dam because I know it's going to go away. And so I did, and I walked around and really got up close to it. I and mean, we driven by it a million times, but I never really got out of the car. And it was really, um, I really enjoyed looking at it, and I, I just loved the description of how you expect it to be done and, and how it will actually be a good thing uh, for the environment. And I, um, my experience with dredging Paradise Pond in, in uh, 1998 when we couldn't refill. We were done dredging in August, but we couldn't refill because we didn't have flow, and we, we refilled on, on October 10th. So for almost eight weeks, and here's this pond bottom, a portion of which we did not dredge, and it was absolutely a green meadow. We started calling it uh, Paradise Meadow. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm, I'm certain that it will come back in a way that people just can't imagine. Yeah. It was fascinating. I did enjoy it. It was, I watched it for like an hour and a half. It was a long thing. There was a second one too, I forget what it was now, but it was also interesting. Hinkley Street. Did you watch that one? Uh, no. No, it was following your hearing, the next hearing after that one. I kept oh, watching it. about Star Wars? You see that? That is <laughs> 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 good. Do they have all their permits? <laughs> no, they just, they just, they just went ahead. <laughs> <laughs> they just went ahead. Wendy, do you have any? Oh, just as I was pulling up uh, on the radio, I heard that the bottom has fallen out of the plastics recycling market. Is that something you all are well aware of? Is that no. Well, the story about that. The issue about that, I mean, I don't know everything, and I'm not an expert, but I do know that there's a concept called light, light, lightning, or people are lightening their loads, so there's a uh, less product because of that, because they're careful about it, the weight of items, um, the um, the whole plastics thing, it's about people buying it up, and, and then it's also about China was one of the big buyers. Well, it said, uh, you know, I didn't hear the report because I arrived here, right. but it, right. the lead-in was that it's, it's less expensive to produce than it is to recycle the product. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know what grades and all of that, but I was just curious. Susan said, she was just in here about the time you were coming, sent around like the top ten stories of this year, and there was an article on, on the plastics recycling mm -hmm. and that, so I can report that to you if you're interested. He'd like to see that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was interesting because 
what we've known just to, as our role as landfill is that recycling has gone up and down. MRF across the whole country are having problems. Um, there's, I guess, Jim, you can jump in wrong, but some we went the whole direction of, of not a non separation, and that people aren't sure if that was really a, a, a good direction because of contamination, which was what had been. Yeah, I, I, this goes back many months to some comments that were made by, I don't know who, but uh, financial problems at MRF for this exact reason, the low price of recycled goods. But I, I haven't heard an update on in that in quite a while. Yeah, I don't really have an update. I haven't, I haven't talked to Susan. I don't, you know, we have a contract with the MRF. Plastics in general were never very lucrative. It was always paper and cardboard that mm -hmm. was, you know, kind of driving the market. But uh, if you ever made any money, it was because of those items. But uh, I don't really know what the story is. I'm going to have to race home and try to see if I can find that report. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything else, Jim? I don't. DJ? No, I'm studying my manual. That's nice. Oh, for that? Did you start oh, it? For that. Oh, for that. Oh, for that. Oh, my name is Rico. No, I have nothing. Thank you. We can redo the meeting if necessary. Um, just a, just a acknowledgement to the hard work that was done by the city of Northampton in implementing the plastic bag ban. And I've got to say that I was downtown. Um, it was a bag day when, uh, with David Starr oh, dressed David. up as the bag. You know, a recycled bag, and, and then other volunteers took a shift. But I think that there was a really good, there should be some real acknowledgement yeah. of the the community volunteer effort that went into making that work, and then how well it was implemented, and has been implemented by the the merchants and vendors that are obligated to it. So, so a public appreciation of that. Very good, David. Anything else? Pro? No. Uh, just a. Oh, does someone want to address oh, this little device? This is so sweet. I was reading it. Well, they David pointed out, by the way, the only piece I know is that all of this comes from one sheet of paper, which is very interesting. Yeah. Plus, they penciled in the edit <laughs> individual <laughs> copy. The, the okay. note that they, Susan they wrote about it was that it was compiled by Mac Everett yep. from the oh, reuse committee okay. member. Yeah. That's true. Who carefully noted stories from the recenter? Yeah, uh, Mac has been working on publicity. Jump in if you want to have something else to say to him. And he's written a couple of uh, uh, editorials or newspaper editorials um, where you know, sort of telling people about the media center and you know, trying to give it publicity. And so this was his summary of the. Such <laughs> 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 so a recycling word. Gleaned. Yes, <laughs> the gleaners. <laughs> uh, the only item I have is uh, talk about the date for our next meeting. Mm -hmm. We were trying to do the second Wednesday, which would be February 10th. Does that work well enough? Great. Make motion to adjourn. Accepted. Second? Second. Yeah.